Hey guys, Craig here again. It's a channel update then. Um, I've finished building and um, priming the Magach um, Galbatash. Um, so as you can see, here's the finished item. Um, I haven't put the tracks on just yet because they obviously still need painting. Um, but this is what you're going to end up with if you follow the instructions. Um, The actual kit itself then, um, uh, I'll go through some of the issues I've found with this um, whilst building it. But yeah, generally that's it done. Um, so, with regards to the box, it says this is a level 4 difficulty, 5 being the hardest. So 4 is supposed to be challenging. Um, the only thing I really found challenging with building this particular kit was the instructions. Um, the instructions are really poor. The fact that you build an entire tank in sort of like 12 steps gives you some idea of how much each step consists of. Um, some of the more fiddlier parts, uh, cupola for example, some of the turret placement pieces um, all over the place, some of the placement for the, the bottom armour, um, particularly the lower the lower plate that meets here um, is a little bit tricky and a little bit awkward. Uh, but to give you some idea what I'm on about, um, it's the first time I've actually had to go through a kit and um, tick things off as I've gone to make sure that I'm, I know where I am. So just looking at step two, um, this is where it starts going a little bit wrong. As you can see, it shows you the pieces um, and where they go. However, some of these pieces are uh, shaped to fit one way but looking at the um, diagrams it's quite hard to distinguish which way some of these pieces go um, for example these two pieces you could have on either side um, one's b30 one's b31 however on the actual piece there's like holes um, which looks as though it's supposed to go into the suspension units or something um, but it doesn't clearly show you on the instructions which way around it's supposed to go. I know you've got the numbers, B30, B31, etc, etc. Um, but that, that's just a little example of um, what I'm trying to get at. It's all the way through the kit and as you get on to later stages like the turret for example, it becomes more trickier to distinguish what way around some of these parts go. Generally with the running gear... Um, at stage two, once once you've got the lower chassis together, I think it's pretty poor to be honest. Um, and what I mean by that is, when you're putting the suspension units on, like the shock absorbers, like there, there, and here, they're just left dangling. Um, there's nothing to attach them to, and the end of the shock absorber doesn't actually attach to anything. Uh, so I don't know if I'll be able to show you. Through the actual vehicle itself, um, short of taking the wheels off, um, you can just about see the one in the back behind this wheel here, but it's not actually attached to anything, it's just left um, dangling in between the, the arms. Uh, there's one there on this wheel as well, as you can see, it's just on the inside of the wheel. Um, I can't take the wheels off at the minute. But yeah, they're, they're not actually attached to anything. When you're looking at it from the side, you, you, you don't notice. But um, just knowing that the actual shock absorber units, you can just about kind of get in there. Um, just in here is what I'm trying to get at. It's not actually attached to anything, which, which I think is pretty crap. Um, they could have at least mounted them on the um, the bottom arms as they would have been. Um, other things that aren't clear is how some of the armour goes on, uh, like the top deck and that. There's no marks for it, there's no pins for it, it doesn't locate anywhere. You've just got to kind of guesstimate it. I've purposefully left it on um, purpose, but there's a little hole just in there. And same on the other side. Now that's where the original light would have been um, if this was the M60 without the armour on it. Um, but 
I've left it there so you can kind of see that you use those holes same on the other side um, just by the light just oh, back to front just in there and you try and line this top plate up to the holes um, to try and get it center on the um, the glacis other things that you have to do on this kit then um, you've got to trim a lot of detail off of these fenders um, and what I did establish now is that the scratches that were on the kit were very crude markings for where some of this kit actually goes. Um, the two holes that are left here are for the pins for the tow cables. Um, but I'm going to have to paint the whole thing first before I put those pins in to put the tow cables on. Um, so yeah, the, all the scratches that were around here were crude placement marks for where pieces go. Something that you've got to note though is when you put these on, um, you've got to try and get them lined up flush. Because when you come to put the side skirts on, if you don't, they'll bend out um, and it looks pretty awful. So you've just got to try and remember to line up these racing bars here and here, etc. All the way down the vehicle just to make sure your side skirts go on flush. Otherwise, you're going to have issues later on. Um... Other things that this has got on it then, it's got a working hatch on the front, which is pretty good. However, there's nothing in there to justify it, and there's no way you can put a figure in, really, and make, make use of it. The actual hatch does open and slide open, as it does on the real thing. Um, and it just slides across and closes. The headlights... Um, if you follow the instructions, you get little caps that go in the headlights to simulate the actual lens. As you can see, I've left mine out, and it's going to get the, the uh, PVA treatment in there for trying to make the lights look a little bit better. Other things with this then, with the turret on, um, there's it catches on just about everything. It's quite hard to rotate the turret, um, and that's not because it's been primed or anything that is stiff. It's just a really tight fit and the actual basket and the, the turret do catch on the vehicle. Um, but again, that's you can just about see the clearance that you've got in there. Um, and it's more around that sort of area there where it kind of snags in, the, in this sort of area here. But saying that, it's done. Um... The way the hole goes together is very much like an old Tammy kit. It's got the um, the clip at the back that you lock in from one end and a poly cap at the front. But you'll find that it's a pretty pretty bad poor, uh, pretty poor fit, sorry. And you get left with a whopping gap around here. Um, so on mine, I've had to glue it um, and hold it in place just to get rid of that gap to try and sort that out. What I've noticed in the bottom of this kit, it's actually got. Um, imprinted in the plastic positive and negative and battery symbols so i presume at one point this kit was some form of battery operated um model that obviously just went forward and back um or a crude radio control system on it um other things with the kit then that i'm not particularly keen on were you get a lot of accessories but it gives you no idea where to place any of it. So on mine, I've put the spare barrels here. Um, I've put the shovel there. I've put a spare wheel on the front. And the accessories that I'm left with uh, that are going to go in the basket are the, the little ammo boxes, the little wooden boxes. Um, we've got fuel jerry cans. This, the, all this stuff needs weathering up. It's all in base colour. We've got two figures that are going to go in the turret. Uh, what else we got? We got some water jerry cans. Again, they just need um, weathering up. We got oil, oil cans, fuel cans, whatever you want to call those cans. And then the last bits, like I was saying, are the pins to hold the um, tow cables in. There's four of them on the kit. And when you come to build them, 
it tells you you've got to cut certain lengths of string to, to length to make the tow cables but they don't supply you any string in the kit so I've used the old picture wire thing to make the four tow cables there's two different lengths the two short ones go around the front and the two long ones go around the turret um, again these just need weathering up <coughs> and they, they can go on after everything's painted With, again, back to the, the pieces that um, don't fit, a lot of this stuff is just trial and error. Because when you come onto these pieces, because there's no actual physical mounting points to them, when you come to the instructions, that's what you're dealing with. It gives you an idea where they go, but you, you've just got to try and make it fit. So... The actual reference, the black and white pictures that you get, the reference pictures on the sheet, on the painting guide that's in black and white. This thing actually comes in helpful to see how some of the pieces are supposed to fit and where they go. Um, particularly this top deck view that's now covered in black paint. Because uh, it, it clearly does show you roughly whereabouts everything locates. Um, in this picture here it shows you the gun lock forward. If you've got the gun lock forward, the turret will just not rotate because it can't clear the basket. Um, another thing that I do like with this is the hatches do open and the hatches are actually detailed on the insides. As you can see, it's very crude. Um, it's just literally click in, click out sort of stuff on that one. But you can have it open and closed. Same with this one. This is a typical hatch. But again, as long as you don't glue it, you can open and close the hatch to um, have your figures in the turret. Something I've noticed on detail with this, it's like on the back of the 50 cal here. A lot of pictures I've, I've looked at on this thing, it's hit and miss. There's a mechanical system that attaches to the gun uh, with wires coming off. So, it's, so you can fire the 50 cal from inside the turret. Um, you don't get that option with this kit. There's nothing in the kit for that. Um, it just gives you the, the manual handles here. So I presume someone would have to get out and physically stand on the front of there and use the 50 cal. Uh, but it would have been nice to have the, the electronic system that goes on there. So you, you could just give that a little bit of extra detail to it. Um... Turret pieces then, when it comes to some of these location things. Again, it was the reference chart that helped more with the location of these. Because when it comes to actually looking on the plastic, there's little, very tiny, faint divots where the mounting points on the bottom of these boxes don't go. <coughs> but if you haven't got a keen eye, you'll miss it. It, <coughs> it took a while to figure out where they were. Um, and then I noticed them because they're that faint. But overall, it builds up to look like a, a, a pretty nice kit despite some of the, the issues and the faults with it. Something else I'm, I wasn't keen on with it is it's it's a solid barrel. You can't have it up, you can't have it down or anything like that because it, it's glued in place onto the mantle. Um, and it's just going to need a little bit of work of sanding and filling to get rid of the gaps down the barrel to um, alleviate things like this going on here. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a few things in the instructions as, as well that just generally it's hard to figure out where, where they go and how they fit. Just quickly going back to that a second. I'm trying to find an example for you. Uh, these pieces here, as easy as that looks, I'm still not entirely sure if where I've put them is right. Um, but I've put mine on the inside of the fender, which kind of closes it in. And then it kind of locates around onto the light. So what I'll show you there is that. I've located mine just on the inside of the fender in there. But reading the instructions and looking, I think it's supposed to go on the outside of the fender. Um, but I'm not sure. Um, somebody might be able to point me in the right direction with that one. Uh, and that's, that's generally it. With the kit, you get 
a lot of leftover piece bits and bobs. Um, so everything off the sprues that are left is all of this. So let's just empty that out so you get a scale of what's going on here. These are all the spare pieces you don't use. I'm still not entirely sure why there's three different types of sprockets. This plate can be used instead of the box that I've got on the back of my turret. This cupola piece is not used, so I presume this is just off of the old M60 kit. Uh, and they've just modified and adapted it for, for being what it is now. You do get these little side rails. If you don't like the basket that's on it, you can make a different basket with that piece. And then you get the bottom of the basket there. And just make up a different basket. But there's quite a few things in here that... I'm still not actually sure where what they are or where they're supposed to go. Um, you get these jerry cans, but you don't get anything to put in the end. It's just an open bucket. It, it's pointless. So they definitely won't be used. Um, I presume that is a spotlight. But it doesn't give you the option of using it. Uh, where's the other half to that? There is another half to it somewhere in there. I just can't see it at the minute. Uh, trust me it's there though I'm not entirely sure what oh, I know what that is in, in the kit there's a couple of pieces where it's got a question mark in it and it's basically the, exactly the same piece so this one's on my tank already but the only difference between the pieces and the question marks is one's got extra detail and one hasn't um, so I'll put the one with the extra detail on there's the other half to that light thing there so I presume that's some sort of spotlight or something that's supposed to go on on the tank. You get these little boxes with location pins on the bottom. I'm not entirely sure where they're supposed to go. I've, I've looked at the M60 pictures and I still can't figure out where they're supposed to go. You get the different pins um, for the wheels. So I presume they're the M60 American pins rather than the ones that are on it. And you get just little odds and sods, really. You get loads of little um, links of rounds, like we said before. Oops. You get this thing. I uh, presume that's something to do with mounting a weapon on that. But again, I'm not entirely sure what that's for. You get the smoke dischargers that usually go on top of the barrel on the M60. Uh, it, it's just basically... An M60 that's been scribed to fit the the Galbatash parts is what I'm, I think they've done. But overall, coming off of things like the Bradley and the um, the 432, etc. I didn't find anything particularly challenging with this. From start to finish, it took six hours to build and prime to, what, to the stage we're at now. If you're a young modeler building up to something like this yeah it could be a little bit challenging just reading the instructions however um if you're a more experienced modeler coming down to this it, it's not interesting um the macabre i've got downstairs again was a lot more challenging than this and a lot more detailed than this but it was the same thing it's the academy kit on the macabre um, but at least they supplied uh, clear parts for your periscopes and your driver's hatches and stuff So from here then I'm going to get it painted and weathered up uh, And like I said, it's just going to be a static thing And then I'll do the final reveal of that and park this up in the Oops park this up in the uh, cabinet behind me so yeah With this one then guys, it's really hit and miss um, You've really got to want this particular kit to want to build it i certainly wouldn't want to do another one just purely because i think it's nasty um i think it could be a lot better with a little bit more effort put in from the manufacturer side but other than that you, you take it as it is it, you like i said you really got to want it to build it uh, I've, I've not got much israeli kit which is why i thought mm, i'll give that a go However, mm, 
I don't know. I don't think it's worth thirty quid. To be perfectly honest, I think. I think we're being spoilt with the newer kits now, and coming back down to an older kit. Again, I still don't know how old this is. When was this printed? Um, I don't think it actually says anywhere when these instructions were printed to give us some idea. Um, 2013. So it's not that old a kit. It's 2013. But either way, the, the bars are being raised now with, with these Chinese kits out on the market. And they're, they're certainly a lot more interesting and challenging to build. The tracks, um, just while I'm, I'm thinking about it. As you can see, I've melted them together. Um, and I've used the old little cotton trick just to make sure they stay together. Because then they're going to have to get stretched around the actual vehicle. Well, looking forward to see how they paint up. Um, it shouldn't be too bad. I'll probably just prime them actually, and once they're on the vehicle, and, and work my way around it, because the whole running gear does move. As you can see, it it's free rolling. Everything everything's good on that that camp. So anyway, the next update on this then, I'll have it painted. I have it weathered. Um, I'll show you what it's going to look like, and that's me with this thing. And then I'll get back to you on the next project, which I'm not sure what it is yet. So that's me for now, guys. I'll give you a shout probably tomorrow or maybe later on today once it's painted. Um, and park it up. So any questions, comments, again, feel free to leave them in the, the sections below. And that's me for now, guys. So thanks for your time and I'll speak to you later on.